Oh, I, I, I work with women. I would never tell a woman to walk through that in the same frame of mind I was in when I did it. And what, when you say that, but what frame of mind was that? What, what do you mean by that in particular? I was very, <clears throat> very hurt. I was very angry. And I remember like when I made like the, the decision, I was like hysterically crying mm. on the phone with my attorney. That was not wow. the person I should have been on the phone with when like, that's a whole nother conversation. But anyway, I was hysterically crying and I was not in any position to make that decision. I was extremely emotionally intoxicated. Mm. We can be intoxicated with our emotion. I'm one, I'm very much emotionally led. I feel very strongly. I'm just that kind of person, very passionate. But um, I would never tell somebody to make that decision when they're that emotional. But of course I was, and I wasn't talking to someone that genuinely would be for marriage, you know, or, or for reconciliation. And that's not, to, that's not no slight to my, you know. No, it's, it's the current, the current it's not, Yeah, it has nothing. There's no slight to that. It, not the friends, but I was on the phone with my attorney. Yeah. So it, it was something that was being said to me that hurt me at that time. And that... um so at that time when I was on the phone and I made that decision, I was, I was, I was, I was livid. The, the, the truth about the matter is that if I had different people in my ear at that time, I would not have made that decision. No, wow, I wouldn't. And that's the truth. I, um, I try my very best at this point in my life to be what I didn't have in that moment. Um, because I think that I was, women were like, I'm an extremely emotional person. People that know me know that about me. I'm the kind of person that like, okay, I feel so strong and I can ruminate. I can get so lost in my thoughts. I know a lot of women are like that. Like we're a lot, not all of us, right? But some of us are just like a lot of men can be like that. But I know women specifically, the there will be moments where they'll be like, I'm ready to, I'm ready to be done. I'm ready to be done. I'm ready to be done. I can't stand this. He don't do this. He don't do that. Blah, blah. When you get lawyers involved and our, you know, there was a therapist that was speaking to both me and him, a marital therapist at the time that when I told him my decision, he was like, um, you know, when you get lawyers involved, it gets ugly. Mm. He told me that. And, you know, I didn't even realize I don't think I even realized how ugly it would get, you know? And I, like I said, I could, if I could walk back in time, you know, sometimes I battle with myself about that. But at that time, I thought I was doing the right thing or the best thing. You know, I didn't know. I didn't know how ugly it could get. And I know a lot of women, we make that decision and we're so hurt and angry. And then five, six months later, you're not that angry anymore. Like, oh, this kind of like still care about them. I kind of still have these feelings. You now in the spirit of potentially even being able to rekindle a relationship, like like rekindle that relationship is, is your spirit in that place or is, could it ever go back to that place? It's loaded because of the fact that there's been so much that's happened, you know, like there's been so much that's occurred. Um, Okay. my daughter's father. So I would, I would say this, I would say that if we were both going to show up and we were both going to fight for it equally and sacrifice equally, like, you know, things that I needed and, you know, things that, you know, he needed, I wasn't perfect. Come on. Yeah. Um, your girl ain't perfect. Um, so I, I would I would say that if 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 we were both willing to fight and we were both willing to do certain things and yeah. Okay, so 
as you can see, we see Tyrese on the screen. Let me give you guys a little backstory. So this is Tyrese's ex-wife. Okay, let me let me just dial it back a little bit. And, um, you know, she has come to the forefront and stated, you know, she did some kind of interview or whatever the case and has basically stated that, you know, she uh, regrets filing for divorce. She regrets like, you know, basically putting him through the ringer. <laughs> if she could go back in time, you know, she would change the hands of time. Excuse me. I don't want my phone going off. She, um, will, you know, would change the hands of time and, you know, she would rekindle things if he was willing to work it out with her. And, you know, she was saying all of this. And to be honest, I had so many people send me this clip on social media, not this exact one, but clips of her speaking in this interview on social media. And I'm so glad that I was waiting in the water before I decided to give my full fledged reaction to this because I just had a feeling that somehow, some way, Tyrese was not going to let this slide. But before I even get into his section of the video, I want to give you guys my thoughts on the first things that she said. Okay. So. First of all, um, a lot of people were saying, you know, we do have to give credit where it's due. She is taking accountability for her actions. You know, she is acknowledging the fact that she is the one who, uh, you know, messed up and that she made a mistake. And, you know, everybody's human. People are allowed to make mistakes. The fact that she acknowledged that we should be giving her credit for that. Let me tell you why I have a little bit of a difference in opinion about this situation. My opinion Okay, I have to say this again. This is just my opinion. This is just my feelings on this particular situation. You see, this is just th this was a five minute clip of her talking. I'm sure there was a you know the the interview was a very long amount of time, but I feel like this is a good enough clip uh, to you know get kind of an idea of how the conversation was going on. And in my opinion, it seems as though um, I don't see the accountability because. Immediately as I was listening to this, my spidey senses were going off and I'm hearing her talk about how, um, you know, she should have never talked to her attorney and basically is saying it's my attorney's fault because my attorney is the one who talked me into this. And, you know, she whoever her attorney is, I don't know if it's male or female, you know, they don't advocate for relationships. And so I was, um, uh, you know, led down this road of divorce, even though I was just upset and they should have talked me off the ledge, you know, that's not what they did. And so technically that's a whole other conversation for a different day. But if we wanted to blame somebody, I'm going to have to point to my attorney and blame them. And, you know, this is what a lot of women believe that, um, accountability looks like. However, that's not exactly what it is. That's not what accountability is. It is not looking for someone else to point the blame to. It is not looking for an outside source. It is not retracting yourself and say, well, now that I come to think about it, you know, it was these people who were in my ear and it was these people who were saying these things. And if they never did this, no. That's not what it is because the the uh, the demise of the relationship did not begin when you got on the phone. You had something in your brain. You said you were angry. OK, cool. Everybody gets angry. You said that you are, you know, very passionate. A lot of women do this as well. They hide behind the words, you know, passion and emotional and all of these things as means to disrespect, as means to disregard, as means to cross boundaries. Just keeping it. A hundred. Oh, you know, I was emotional and I was really angry. I was so heated. And, you know, I'm a very emotional person. I'm very emotionally wired. And so I made decisions based off of my emotions. These were not temporary decisions that were made off of emotions. These were permanent, huge decisions made off of your emotions. And then... To make matters worse, you were so riled up that you called your attorney. You called your attorney. Nobody else didn't call. You know, the, the, the attorney didn't happen to call you. You know, he didn't call his attorney and then your attorney called you because of something that was going on. You made the decision and the choice to call your attorney because you were saying, oh, I'm so done. This is what it is. 
It's over. It's a wrap. Let me call my attorney and solidify this. In a marriage. Where you have a child. There was no situation of, let me call somebody who's an advocate for saving my relationship. This is the problem that a lot of women do. A lot of women do this. They get mad, they go call their single friends. Like, what is your single friend going to tell you? They miss you in the streets. They miss you in the club. They miss you when they go out on girls trips. What do you think they're going to say? Do you think that your your single friends are going to sit down with you and say, no, you know, you really have a good relationship. No, girl, you know, you tripping. You should really fight for this. They're not going to do that unless you're in front like me. Okay. You got some married friends that still the girl. Get out while you ahead because I'm stuck with this one. It's rare that you have friends that are going to be honest with you. I've lost friends because of my honesty. Because I'm not going to sit here and patty cake you. Because of how you feel in the moment or because of, uh, you know, sometimes the, your immaturity. You get into a space that you kind of feel stuck or whatever. The, no problem. But if you're coming to me with a situation, I'm going to tell you if that don't make no sense or if that makes sense to me. It is intentional. When you pick up the phone and you dial a phone number, it is intentional. You are very intentional about the person that you are calling. Angry or not, emotion or not. You know, uh, you know this is like a new, a new verbiage that I heard, emotionally intoxicated. Okay, you was angry, just like how everybody else get angry. People get mad. This is the things that 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 um that change that make or break the relationship. What are you gonna do when you're angry? Are you gonna go and, and call you know uh somebody and start you know spilling all this uh you know information that this person was never privy to in your relationship are you going to go over there and call this person and what makes matters worse is that when women do this in relationships they're never telling the 100 percent truth they telling their feelings their opinion they side oh well he did this and he did that and he did that and and especially if you call somebody i mean obviously somebody like your attorney your mama Okay, your daddy, your uh, friend group that that they kind of, you know, want you back with them. People who are not going to be 100 percent real about the situation and look at the, the, the situation like, OK, let's see. Somebody who does not have um, whenever you call somebody who does not have the both of your best best interests at heart, when they just have your best interests at heart. You do not need to give them any ammunition to be on your side if you want them to give you full balance advice tell them what you did better yet why don't you call somebody from his somebody who has his best interest at heart and talk to them so they can tell you we have to we have to think this is why a lot of the relationships break up is because people do things off of impulse. They're not thinking. This is why the, the women are the ones who leave the relationship and the men are the, one, men are the ones who wade in the water. Because women think, oh, I'm mad, I'm angry. Oh, you know what? I'm out. Then they be the main ones. They thought the grass was green, the grass brown. <laughs> brown as ever. They be thinking they got it. They could do better than him, this, that. And it's all good and fine for the first couple months. That's the one thing I agree with what she said. A lot of these women go out here, first couple months, they fine and dandy. Oh, yeah, you know, they getting they, they uh, you know, they swag back and they feeling like, you know, they the best thing since sliced bread. They got men hollering at them. You know, they free, quote, unquote, they back. They thinking that, you know, somebody better is just going to come and scoop them right on up. 
Then when the facade fades and reality hits and you're still in the same position, you still have to learn how to uh, relearn or, or re-understand all those same lessons. You still got to figure these things out. You still got to deal with your trauma. You still got to deal with the fact that you had a part to play in this. And the, the part that you played is the reason why the relationship fit. When you start going through all of that stuff, then you be the one talking about, well, maybe we should have been together. Well, you know, maybe I should have said, or, you know, maybe things actually weren't that bad I always say this I said this before many a times I'm going to say it again you see women leave the relationship and instantly they might feel sadness for a day or two or whatever then instantly they feel better because they had their friends their friend group their homegirls their this their that and in a couple of months their happiness goes like up and they come right back down when reality strikes when they tired of going out, when they coming home alone, when they realize that what what your husband was willing to put up with these men are putting up with, with the, the all the fun they thought were happening that that they thought was happening was a facade, then they come that they crying at night, now they think, oh, I should have, could have, I would have, man, I should have said, I should have, I did. With men, it's the opposite. With men, they're in the relationship. When it when it instantly ends, while women are soaring, they're dealing. They're dealing with the issues. They're dealing with the situation head on. And then their happiness starts to go like this. Because you know what? They always find somebody. <laughs> Whether women can can claim from now till next never that the man was a problem, but the men always find somebody else. They always end up end up in another uh, situation, another relationship, because they're the one who dictates the pace. Okay, let me tell you something. You see. When it comes to the reality of how these things unfold and how things are going to happen and how you have to really think about what you do before you do it, I think there's a lesson to learn from this from her. There's a lesson to learn. Before you make all these, you know, permanent decisions, you need to sit down and think. Reevaluate. Think about the bigger pictures, not just how you feel right now. Think about the overall picture because feelings are fleeting. If you follow your feelings, you're going to have a life full of chaos. That's real. Following your feelings leave, leave people obese, <laughs> leave people, you know, highly addicted to things like sugar and salt, sodium, fast food, uh, lazy behavior, lazy mentality. Like we can go on and on. I think also, you know, it says a lot, the audacity of her saying, you know, well, yeah, if he was willing to work with me, then we would be together. This man was down and out. Okay. He was on the internet crying, saying that you're taking him for everything that he got. He was snot nosed. And where were you to help? You left him out there drowning. Now, months after or I don't know, it's a year after, however long, now you're like, oh, well, you know, yeah, I would be willing to work because, you know, I wasn't perfect. We know. <laughs> but when it was the other way around and he was getting all this backlash, you never said, well, you know, he wasn't the only one who was a problem. I was a problem too. You see, that's another thing, timing. You wait till all the smoke clear and then here you are. And, and since he in a relationship with somebody young and cute and he got his own little thing going on, you like, oh, well, you know, we have a family and, you know, I'm willing to fix my family. What happened to your family when you instantly got into whatever disagreement you got into? You was upset. You was angry. And you called your lawyer first. You weren't thinking about keeping your family together. So Tyrese had a lot to say about this. Um, I'm going to have to probably play a part 
give you my opinion and play another part because he had a lot to say and it took up some time. So let me just go right into it. I would say that if 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 we were both willing to fight and we were both willing to do certain things, then yes. I was not going to respond to this video of my ex that's now gone viral. She is loving it. Congratulations, you went viral again over something else that you said because you're trying to build up your YouTube page and get your followers up. Listen, man, listen. If you had people in your ear that influenced you into leaving your husband and your one-year-old child, your innocent one-year-old child, we both were divorcee kids, grew up in toxic environments, torn in between our old family, new family, stepfather, stepmother. That's a life that we both lived. And you packed up a one-year-old, put a COVID mask on top of the rain cameras, and I was literally in an airplane on my way home to fight for my marriage and my family. You're heartless. None of your friends recognize you. This is all about money. If you had friends in your ear, you're lying, you're gaslighting, you're playing. The only person that was in your ear was your mama. Her name is Patricia Randolph. You didn't have people in your ear. The amount of people that was supposedly in your ear, you also had a whole lot of people like Aventer Gray, Taffy Dollar, Creflo Dollar's wife, who married us. You had a whole lot of people in your ear telling you that you're about to do something stupid, impulsive, and y'all are actually not going through anything that would make you want to leave your husband. Let's go even further. When Aventer Gray and Pastor John Gray were having their own marital issues at the time, you arranged a therapy session with Aventer Gray at our house. And when she walked out of her therapy session, she walked into the foyer where the bumblebee is, and there was 50 boxes with like seven or eight people there packing up all the sh to leave the house. And I was in an airplane on my way home to try and fight and save our marriage. So if you had people in your ear at the time, they must be still in your ear because you're still trying to get $20,000 a month for a five-year-old. You make $160,000 a year on your own. This is all a game. You're clout chasing. You're something that I don't even know. A simple woman, not into materialistic things, don't want, don't care about fame and mansions and popularity. You're everything that you told me and all of your friends and loved ones that you wasn't. If you wanted to be famous, boo-boo, that's all you had to say. You didn't have to play this game that you wasn't. Now you are here playing on single mothers and their emotions playing on women that are actually in relationships and fucked up marriages that are toxic and dark and dysfunctional. That's not what, what, what that was. You think I would have a song entitled, I don't think you ever loved me if I didn't really feel that way? You think I would have a song out called Love Transaction if I didn't realize that it was never love, it was just a transaction? This shit is about money. You've hired three law firms trying to suck me dry. I'm approaching a million dollars in legal fees and we had a prenup. You already tried to ask me to come back. You already tried to reconcile. I told you I was in a relationship with Zelly and I was not willing to go and break this off or cut this woman off because you decided to wake up on a Wednesday and come back and play in the sandbox. Everything about the way you left me was heartless. Okay, guys, there's more that he's going to say, but I just wanted to interject right here before I forget when we, you know, get to the other portion. So 
it's so interesting because, you know, all over the internet, we always hear women talking about, oh, you know, I want like that 90s R&B love, you know, I want that love from the 90s, I want those, you know, those men who used to sing in the 90s and this and that, and here we are, we have women who get into relationships with these same kind of men that they say that they want, and be running for the hills, either either because they chasing the bag, uh, just calling it what it is, or because uh you know the real them emerges. I don't know if y'all read between the lines, but basically I heard Tyrese say she a chameleon. That's what I heard. He said. I know what y'all heard. That's what I heard. <laughs> okay. He said that there were people around who were telling her that she is making a mistake and making decisions for no reason because they don't see the reason why she should not be working in her marriage. This is what he said. And I'm sure he wouldn't be calling these people's name if it was not accurate. Because these people can come on here and say, that's not true. Tyrese, I never said that. You know, people, people can advocate and say, that was not what I said. And he's, he's saying it blatantly. What's so crazy is the fact that, you know, he it was basically like a sneak attack. Like, like oh, okay, let me call the lawyers. Let me leave while he's out of town. Let me hurry up and exit stage left. And you see, there's so many women who are in spaces and um, whether what, whatever the backstory of the situation is, they wish they had somebody fighting for, to stay with him. They wish. And you have women who have men who are fighting to stay with them, fighting to work it out, and they, they are like, please leave. They leave in a relationship talking about, oh, no, I can't do this. That grass over there seemed real green. I got to get out of here. And exactly like I said before, oh, he's happy? Oh, well, that girl don't mean nothing. She just a little girlfriend. I'm the mother of his child. You know, I have to come first. So I'm going to tell him I want to work it out. He going to kick her over to the curb. And whatever I couldn't get in the divorce filings, I'm just going to go back to that lifestyle because a lot, what a lot of women do, they play on a man's emotions. Because she knows that he has a very caring heart. Because she knows that he is very soft-hearted. She tried to use that to however she can bend it. Okay, if I use the word family, if I use the word get back together, if I, if I talk about our family unit, if I talk about our child... You see, a lot of women don't understand, you know, you do control access to intimacy. Men control access to relationships and marriage. We heard this a million and one times. That's why a man is the one who makes it official when he's with a girl. That's why a man is the one who asks a woman to marry him. He, a, a man is in control of that. You can't play the fiddle and think you can just come back whenever you want to and just grab him back up and it's going to work like that. It doesn't work like that. Which leads me again, why I think it's very important for a woman to love a man more in a relationship. I think it creates such a good balance in a relationship. Let you be the one fighting. I And I know people going to say, what are you talking about? Let you be the one fighting to save your relationship. You go there. Because when a man, when you tell him it's done, seal the deal you getting you know attorneys involved you trying to take him for every cent he got that you wasn't even entitled to this man said he had a prenup so what are y'all fighting for let's continue it was evil you never considered me your marriage and let alone your innocent one-year-old child she had to celebrate her second birthday apart and if you really are really suddenly caring about the effects that you've had on me and your family, why don't you sit the lawyers off of me? Call your lawyers right now and tell them that everything that you're still trying to get right now, you don't want it no more. $20,000 a month for a child? Our prenup says no alimony. 
Our prenup said everything that the prenup said. You're trying to crack the prenup. And it's been three years of it. I should have never hired a fucking attorney. I had a prenup. Everything that I was supposed to give you in the prenup, I gave it to you. You want more. And it's been three years. I've moved on. I'm with Zelly. You moved on. I don't even want to tell you because the first time you started dating when we broke up. Because you're going to go viral from that. If I were to tell you who you started dating as soon as we broke up, you would go viral from that. All you want is attention. You want Facebook followers. You want Instagram followers. You're trying to be a life coach and you're trying to get us to drink the Kool-Aid. Fucking with a real one right here. Everybody can see through your shit. I may be alpha. I may be loud. I may appear to be a narcissist as some say in the comments. Girl, you was good to leave that. He's a narcissist. No, she's a narcissist. Not only is she a narcissist, but she's a sociopath as well. And what is a sociopath? Someone who will maliciously and vindictively do something over you, hurt you, be made aware of the fact that they inflicted trauma and pain on you and not even call you and text you to say they sorry. Did you think about the effects that it was gonna have on me or our innocent child when you left me the way you did? Did you think about anything? No, it's all about Samantha. So now, go ahead and chase whatever career you're trying to chase. Go ahead and go viral. Go ahead and keep doing your goofy ass podcast and Miracle Mondays and whatever else you're trying to build. Over here, I don't want no one to confuse me releasing songs the way Adele released songs about her ex-husband, the way Jasmine Sullivan and Mary J. Blige release songs about their exes when they get cheated on, lie, get fucked over, when they go through painful relationships that come to an end. I don't want no one to confuse me releasing songs, singing about how I feel about Samantha with confusing me wanting this woman back. If I wanted her back, I would have got her back. I don't want Sam. She may be saying that she was thinking about, no. If you had people in your ear when you left me, those same people are in your ear three years later because the lawyers are still on my back every day. Go sell this to somebody else. Look at every interview I've done from Sway in the morning to the Breakfast Club to everything that I've been posting and everything that I've been saying. And if you don't like me, I don't like you. I don't need none of you women in my comments saying they like me. I don't care to be liked. I got my heart broke. I was married. I was with this woman for five years. I never cheated. I got more access to than most niggas I know. I was a good man, a good husband, and very, very focused on my family and my children. And the $25 or $2,600 that I was giving Samantha since she decided to leave me, I was giving her that for two years straight without a court order. Find another name. So his, his, um, his, his, uh, his, um, thing was like, uh, cutting in and out at the end. So it wasn't, it, it, it was just like a lot of stuttering and, and blinking out and stuff like that. But I think just let alone, you know, I think he said it all. Okay. And you know what? A lot of them were saying, oh, here he go. You know, he's so emotional and stuff like that. But I love the fact that he's coming out and speaking out for himself because a lot of women will stand out and they have all of these things to say. And they say it in some kind of, um, you know, thought process that the man is not going to defend himself. He's not going to have anything to say. So people are going to look at this woman like, oh, my gosh, she's so sweet. She's so kind. She's so caring. And a lot of men, men will not do this. Right. There's a lot of women who get out of a, a relationship, paint this entire narrative about what a man, what he did, what he didn't do, how terrible he is, how, you know, all of these things. They will paint this entire sob story. 
and people will run with it and believe it because a lot of men are not going to stand on the internet and video themselves and talk about these women. A lot of men, they take it to the chin. All right, I'm not even going to address that. I'm not even going to talk about that. I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm just going to do me, worry about myself. I'm just going to keep it pushing. I love that he, you know, in a sense, vindicated himself. Like, okay, y'all, oh, that's all cute and all, but let me give y'all the real. <laughs> okay, let me give y'all the backstory. And if you felt so bad for me, if you felt so, if you, uh, you know, were so accountable for your actions, if you wanted to right all those wrongs, then why are you still pressing me? Why are you still pushing the envelope for me to be giving you stuff that I don't need to be giving you? Why are you so, why am I still going through this? I feel that. I completely get it. Because a lot of women will say out of their mouth that they say, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, I was wrong for what I did. You know, I was this and I was that. But their actions behind the scenes say they still feel the same way. Actions behind the scenes say they don't care. Actions behind their scene, do you know, a lot of it is, is to, to paint the face to other people. A lot, of, a lot of women get married for other people. They leave the relationships because of other people. And then they try to create this whole facade of how they feel and how well they're doing after the relationship is over for other people. Were you telling the other people that he was giving you $2,500 to $2,600 a month after you decided to leave him? Even though you left him, you know, in the middle of the night? <laughs> no, he had to tell us that. Did he tell us that before? No. I love the authenticity. I love that he didn't hold nothing back. And, you know, it, it's it's sad because there's a child that's caught in the midst of this. But I genuinely believe, like, this is a situation of don't start nothing, won't be nothing. Because he was not saying nothing. Okay? He was talking about his songs. He was talking about how he felt. But this, to me... You know, based off of what he's saying, this looked like an interview of, let me clear my name. Let, let people not know these intricate details of the things that I have going on. Let them look at me in the light that I want them to look at me like. I would like to know what you, there's so much stuff we could say about this. Okay, there. let's not get it twisted. This is, you know, a shorter video. We could be here all day talking about all the intricate details of this entire conversation. I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you.